Welcome into Forward Progress presented by FanDuel. We are breaking down Thursday night football between the Bills and the Dolphins in Miami. I'm Rob Pizzola, joined by Fabian Somer, Suma as he is known. Suma, a little bit of market movement in this game. Looking at the line right now, we got Dolphins up to minus two and a half, minus 115, actually approaching a three. Also some movement on the total coming down all the way to 48 and a half. And this is something that we've seen across the league this week with a lot of the totals dropping probably because of the play that we saw in week one, slower pace, sloppy quarterback play. But let's start with a breakdown of the game here, Suma. Dolphins, Bills, what do you make of this matchup? Um, yeah, I'm um, very exciting about this. Um, first week, I mean, going into the season, I thought that overall Bills probably, or I, I had them weighted a little bit higher than Miami. And then there was really nothing in both games that got me off of my uh, season prior. We are dealing with some injuries. Uh, Matt Milano, obviously, still out. Um, some issues along the Bills' defensive line. But when looking at that Miami uh, Jacks game, I think that A, the Dolphins struggled on defense. And I think also that their offense did not get into any rhythm. And we are not talking about a special defense in the Jaguars here. Like all the perimeter runs that Mike McDaniel last one, the Jacks were pretty much closing in on them like all the time. They had like, I don't know, three, three yards per carry or something on, on those runs. And I think part of that is the offensive line that outside of uh, Armstead is like not good at all. And I think that's something that is going to bite the Dolphins every time again this year. And um, I mean, if Teres Etienne does not fumble at the one yard line, the Jacks are up 24 seven and we might be talking completely different about Miami. Um, Bills are dealing with with some injuries. Like I said, Teron Johnson, probably a, a huge loss for the secondary. Secondary, that's not great on paper. But I think that the style of defense that Buffalo plays overall is kind of decent against Miami, so to speak, because the Jacks played a ton of man coverage. And if you have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill against man coverage, um, that really is not a great recipe. Um, but the Bills really try to keep the game in front of them. They try to be very zone heavy in the past against Miami, and they had some success against that offense. Um, last year, uh, last week, I think Miami called like 12 screens or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this style of, of, of offense really meets a defense that might be better prepared for it than the Jaguars were. And the Jaguars already did a very good job. So I don't really... I'm in love with that matchup for Miami. Um, on the other side, I'm still very, very high on the Bills offense. Um, yes, they played against arguably the worst defense in the league right now. Dolphins defense is uh, at least one up in class um, versus the, the Cardinals defense. But I am not sold out of them. I think that Jalen Ramsey is still dealing with a hamstring, hamstring injury, had some major issues. Uh, last week against the the, the, the Jaguars D line is still not um, or just a, a little bit thin. Jalen Phillips um, is not at a hundred percent, and the Bills O line did a very good job last last week. I think that they really try to lean more onto the running game this year. They will try to distribute the ball, and they have an absolute cyborg at quarterback. Um, so, to cut a long story short, I have. The Bills in general rated a little bit higher. Now we have to adjust for some injuries, short week on the road at Miami. There might be some weather impact. You will address this soon. So um, yes, I get why the market is moving towards Miami, but for my taste, it has moved too much. And at the current price, I lean towards Buffalo. Yeah, it's an interesting one too, because there's potential weather impact in the game. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to rain much throughout, but we have a lot of storms Thursday afternoon leading up until the game. We might have some showers throughout the game as well. Uh, wet field in Miami could have an impact if, if it is indeed raining as much as we expect over the course of the afternoon. And I think that's why you might have seen the total come down a little bit here, honestly, um, in addition to the fact that maybe the Bills are running a very different style of offense this year with trying to establish the run a little bit more, 
um, than they had in years past. I, I, I tend to agree with you on the side here. I just can't really get to this price just yet on Miami. I do think, though, that as weird as it may say, as it may seem, Raheem Mostert being out, Devon A. Chain probably missing the game, that might work to Miami's advantage a little bit more, where they just end up throwing the ball more. Because I, I don't trust this offensive line in run blocking. I think we saw that last week where they struggled to run the ball successfully. They obviously lost Connor Williams and Robert Hunt in the offseason. That could potentially have a major impact for them. And then with Teron Johnson out on the other side for Buffalo, it's potentially a very exploitable matchup for the Miami Dolphins. So in my opinion, I think this total's gone down just a little bit too much. Buffalo's offense last week struggled in the first half. I picked it up in the second half. I get it. It's Arizona. They're probably not going to continue at that like torrid pace that they had in the second half all season long. But I'm with you, Suma, in that I'm just not sold on this Dolphins defense right now. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, I mean, signed another big contract, but he, he looked more like a safety last week than a corner. Just didn't look like he had the foot speed. He was getting hurt off the line of scrimmage quite a bit. They don't have the pass rush, especially with Bradley uh, Chubb still on the pup list as well. So lean Buffalo, candidly, honest with the audience, didn't play it myself. Um, but over is starting to become interesting to me. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Suma. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I mean, a wet pitch or some rain without like any wind conditions also kind of fa uh, favor the over. So um, agree there. Um, and yeah, I mean, as as much as I lean towards Buffalo, your points are all valid that if Miami really comes out with a, a smart approach in the passing game, there are weaknesses to exploit. Uh, safety, Teron Johnson out, middle of the field, defense. That, that, that there should be some space for Miami to operate. And yeah, if they go like like more pass heavy because they feel like they cannot run the ball as well as, as they did in the past, yeah, that would also favor the over here. Before we get into our props and our SGPs for tonight's game, just to want to remind you, football's back. There's no better place to bet the NFL than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, all customers can bet $5.00 and you get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. It's a great deal for only 5 bucks. It's painful nowadays to watch the NFL. Costs are through the roof, so make sure you check that out. FanDuel is the only sportsbook where you can get it. And with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real-time stats and data to help you with your live bets. So visit, visit FanDuel.com slash Forward Progress. Download America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash forward progress, all one word. You must be 21 plus, 18 plus in DC and present in select states. The offer ends September 22nd. After the three-week free trial, the full price of NFL Sunday ticket will be automatically charged seasonally. You can cancel any time, no refunds, terms, restrictions, and embargoes apply. A YouTube TV base plan is required to watch YouTube TV. And if you have a gambling problem, make sure you call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit rg-help.com. Um, Suma, I did Miami radio yesterday with Channing Crowder, used to be a safety for the Dolphins, and Mark Hawkman. And one thing that they were talking about going into this year, they bet in week one, Tua over two and a half rushing yards. He had one carry for 11 yards, but they believe that Tua is going to be more involved in the run game this year and a little bit more willing to take off. Obviously, he had the concussion problems, a few years ago, but from what they've seen in training camp, they think that Tua's legs might be a realistic possibility in third down situations and possibly in the red zone as well, getting him on the move. So I'm looking at props tonight. Market has moved up a little bit to Tua four and a half yards, but I'm going to trust the Miami guys who are in tune with the team. And I like the over here in a game where I don't like many props. I think rooting for Tua... Uh, to score, or excuse me, to pick up some yards on the ground is big. Obviously, we got to, you know, fingers crossed, no kneel downs at the end of the game. That can affect things as well. But I think the yardage number is a little bit short based off of that information. So that's one way I'm attacking props. I'm curious if there's any players in this game particularly that you're looking out for in props. I'm looking or waiting for the Curtis Samuel breakout. 
Um, he's still dealing with the turf tower, and I think that each game he, he will get a, a higher snap share. His snap share last week was, I don't know, 27% or something. Uh, clearly not at 100%, but I thought that going to the year before his injury, he was going to be an, an integ integral part of that offense. And even last week in a limited sample size, they lined him up all over the place. And I think that he, he, he really fits that offense well as that um, underneath option that they can use in, in like different ways. So um, I think it only depends on how much he's going to play or how much they are going to, or they are willing to throw him out on the turf toe. But if he gets like a, a higher snap share, I think that those market prices are a little bit short because you can get like, I don't know, um, 60 plus receiving yards, all, all like plus seven, uh, 90, for example, um, uh, four plus reception is a very decent price. So, I mean, I can really see once he gets more snaps that they really might feed him. So basically just looking for that uh, Curtis Samuel breakout game might not be today, but I'm just willing to throw some money on it in case it, it happens. All right. Interesting. Yeah. The Bills targets last week were, were definitely interesting across the board because Keon Col Coleman got five and then there was no one else on the team that had more than three. And it was very evenly distributed. Khalil Shakir got three, uh, MVS got two, Curtis Samuel, two, Mac Hollins, two, Dalton Kincaid, two, Dawson Knox, two. So Allen really spread the ball around. Uh, I don't know that that's going to continue going forwards, but that's what it was like week one against an Arizona defense that obviously has uh, a lot of holes in it. Uh, let's get to our SGPs. I'm going to give it a start this week. I've made some mistakes in the past trying to hit the home run, let's say. You know, we've been going for some 30 to ones, 40 to ones, and things of that nature. I'm going to find a sweet spot tonight. I don't love this game from a props perspective, but I'm going to throw in that Tua over four and a half rushing yards, which I talked about. I'm going to take an alternate points in the game. Over 53 and a half at plus money, 54 being a somewhat key number nowadays. I'll take the 53 and a half and, and basically sell points there. And one player that I think might go off from a receiving standpoint tonight is James Cook. I'm going to go James Cook four plus receptions. This is going to be one of the biggest home field advantages Miami has all year. It's a primetime game against Buffalo. They hate the Buffalo Bills, do these fans. It's going to be loud, and there's going to be some communication issues with that O-line. I think Josh Allen will have to check down a few times in this game and utilize his running back to just break up that defensive pass rush as well. So 11-1, to 1, that's the parlay that I'm taking. Suma, I know you're going for maybe a little bit more of a longer shot here. Yeah, I'm going with that uh, Bills win slash Curtis Samuel breakout game. Um, I could be wrong about the usage. Maybe his turf toe is still too bad and he might only see like two targets. I don't know, but if it happens, it, it, it will be great. So Buffalo Bills money line paired with Curtis Samuel uh, four plus receptions and 60 plus yards is 19 to one. And if you want to get some little bit of extra sauce add in Curtis Samuel anytime touchdown which brings it I th I thought I got like 38 to 1 or something so um yeah um I, I lean towards the builds um I lean towards Curtis Samuel at some point having a breakout game and hopefully it's going to be today all right. Hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown of Thursday night football reminder I am back here tonight on forward progress with Chris Dierkis making his debut on the Forward Progress channel, Jeff Feinberg, Barry Horse in the fourth quarter, and a, a special surprise guest in the first quarter. I have no idea who it is. Our director of content, Alex Moretto, booked it. So I'll be just as surprised as you are. Tune in tonight, Thursday Night Football, live watch along right here. And make sure you check out FanDuel Sportsbook for all your betting needs tonight. For myself, Rob Pizzola, Fabian Somer and producer Jason Cooper. We'll see you back here on Forward Progress tonight.